On the 5th of December 1914, Ernest Shackleton departed South Georgia to set on a crazy expedition with the first land crossing of the Antarctic continent. For several weeks, the endurance plodded its way through thick ice, but in mid-January, a northerly gale pressed the ship hard against thick sheets of ice. The ice twisted and grazed like the Kraken until the ship was utterly struck and doomed. In this icy abyss, Shackleton decided to go towards Elephant Island. The crew was subjected to ration shortages, regular soakings of water and temperatures approaching negative 29 degrees for over 150 days. However, this new island proved to be the second worst place in the world besides their ship. With little hope left, they turned to their last resort, South Georgia, a mere 1300 kilometers away. For 16 days, they battled monstrous swells and angry winds on a lifeboat barely fit for sailing. Shackleton recorded, every surge of the sea was an enemy to be watched and circumvented. And even when they thought that they arrived at their destination, they arrived on the wrong side and was forced to trek for over 36 hours over mountains and glaciers to finally arrive at civilization. How many of us are able to push through such frigid biological war zones to live on seals and wipe our asses with snow and have not one crew member die? Look, a lot of us look after people like David Goggins or Miyoya Moto Musachi, the samurai who went on a grueling mission to become the greatest swordsman in history. And we want to emulate them, but do we have the intensity to persist through our goals? Well, with self-discipline, not only will you be able to become the top 0.01% of successful people in the world, but you're able to gain immense fulfillment while doing so. Step one, ask yourself, why do I need self-discipline? Perhaps it's because you want to make yourself proud and make up all of those sleepless nights that you spent playing the new chapter of Fortnite, not amounting to anything besides the degenerate old man losing arguments to 12 year old. Perhaps you want to find time to create that side hustle that you always wanted to do. Perhaps you want to build a boat like me. Well good, now you got your reason because there's a lot more steps involved. Step 2. Decluttering If I want to start building a boat, I have to clean my garage or shipyard or whatever space they use. Just imagine you finish breakfast, finish brushing your teeth and you enter your work office. Even before getting to your chair, you have to manoeuvre through your shoe rack, your blanket, your Xbox controller. <sighs> Bugger. The bin is now full. Gotta take that out at noon. Jeez, I have no more space to put my files. Now where's my coffee mug gone? No matter how minutely messy your environment is, it's gonna rip energy from your soul. And contrary to popular beliefs, things don't make us happy. And certainly, pursuing more things doesn't fulfill us. In fact, owning more stuff can lead us to compare ourselves to even more privileged people, convincing us to buy even more things in a never-ending loop of materialism. And geez, do I need to buy my 100th Air Jordans. By just decluttering your room, it offers a refuge from the overwhelming influx of information and material possessions. Simplifying our environment commitments reduces stress and fosters a sense of calm and discipline towards our actual goals. From meditations, Marcus Aurelius said to treat what you don't have as non-existent. Look at what you do have, the things you value the most, and think about how much you will crave them if you didn't have them. But be careful. Don't feel such satisfaction that you start to overvalue them. That would upset you if you lose them. Step three, find a role model. When I want to build a boat, I copy other boats because they're streamlined, they're elegant, and they're sexy. Because as Seneca once said, without a ruler to do it against, you can't make crooked straights. Stoics call their role model the Stoic Sage, a person who has attained moral and intellectual perfection, embodying the highest virtues of Stoicism. But obviously no one is perfect, so you can just pick anyone you like. And here is a selection of people you want to emulate. Bill Gates, Meryl Shrepp, Nelson Mandela, or whoever the fuck, even your mum or your dog. Now, it's time to research the crap out of your role model. Look at what their day looks like. How do they speak? How do they treat people? What do they do for work? What's their favorite boba flavor? But seriously, read their books, their blogs, their podcasts, which everyone seems to have nowadays, um, to get insight into how they have become so successful in what they do. It is important because when you find yourself in a difficult situation or you're unsure about how to act in any given situation, you can look at your role model and imagine what they do. Step four, focus on one thing only. We currently live in a world which is inundated on countless opportunities. French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre said that humans were free, free in every way, free to behave like a fool or a machine, free to accept, free to refuse, free to equivocate. He could do what he liked. No one had the right to advise him. There will be for him no good or evil unless he taught them into being. In his book, Being and Nothingness, the Bible for modern existentialism. He proclaimed that the only way out of a worthless universe is to size this freedom and construct an authentic existence based around your life's mission. And you know that there's so much freedom on social media. Scrolling through reels and TikToks, you see basically everyone living a lavish lifestyle, sipping on Procesco. And it's like your phone asking you, why haven't you created content, you worthless subway rider? And don't be that guy that just tries to do everything like opening up a movie production company, taking singing lessons, working part-time as tech support, 
for being a computer science major because at that point you're just speed running to old age and bankruptcy. So in conclusion, throw away your phone in the dumpster, put on some meditation music for 10 minutes and concentrate on your work as if it's the last thing that you're gonna do with your life. Step five, just do it. Cause what's the worst aspect of self-discipline? Not even starting. So just do it. Just fucking do it. Step 6. Set goals that are in your control. Okay, so you know what you're doing. Now it's time to set up some milestones. Milestones show us what we are accomplishing and allow us to see how we can accomplish even more. The easiest and best way to set goals is using the SMART system. Specific. What will you achieve? What will you do? Going back to the boat analogy. A specific goal is like completing the electric system on my boat. Measurable. What data will you use to decide whether you met your goal? Like achieving a reduction of at least 20% in energy consumption compared to industry standards for similar size boats. Achievable. Are you really sure you can do this? Do you have the right skills and resources? Absolutely, it is possible for me to wire a boat using things such as fuse boxes, battery trays, and quality marine wires. Relevance. Does the goal align with those of my team or organization? How would the results matter? Well, when you're in the middle of the sea, I guess electricity does make it slightly warmer. Time bound. What is the deadline for accomplishing the goal? Deluding myself into completing this in five weeks. So always break it into smaller goals that are challenging, but that you can succeed in. And for the days that you don't succeed, just remember that the little effort that you put in today has made you a far better person than the yesterday version of you. It's a strange paradox, isn't it? The people who are most successful in life who dominate the profession don't really care much about winning. Stoic philosophy encourages individuals to focus what is within their control and to cultivate an inner resilience that is not swayed by external circumstances or the opinions of others. Marcus Aurelius said that never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, and when you have to, with the same weapons of reason which they arm you against the present. Because if there's one thing that you get away from this shitty video, is that your main goal should be to be the absolute best in your lane. Step 7. Practice delayed gratification. Well, if you guys have come this far, well, congratulations. Our boat is nearly done. But first, we need to do some safety checks. And since we fucking suck at building anything outside of Fortnite, there's going to be technical issues. And what do we call this boat? The Dreamfinder, the Explorer of Dreams. Oh. No, the big deck energy. But luckily, self-discipline will allow us to push through any issues that arises. And for most of y'all, it'll be a long game. I know you've seen all of the stoic meme videos at a fundamental quantum level. Stoicism is about first mastering patience and second, being more happy with whatever happens. Society loves instant gratification and quick results. And usually those who achieve it are really lucky or fortunate enough for daddy to give them a vacation house in Monaco at 16. Marcus Aurelius taught us that the rewards at the end of our journeys are just that, small side prizes along the way. What truly counts is our capacity to be disciplined along our journey to enjoy the hardships that we encounter as it molds us into a tougher individual. Do not seek to have events happen as you want them to, but instead want them to happen as they do happen and your life will go well. Cause while self-discipline doesn't necessarily make you rich, it provides you with freedom from a distracted life, which is pretty fucking close. 